I don't know if you like me, but you have a lot of stuff from your childhood they don't really look at anymore, and it's kind of starting to clutter up that back room in your parents' house, and so they kind of want you to go through it and start getting rid of some stuff. The only thing is, you come across some really cool stuff. Like for me, I came across this really sweet Power Rangers, like laser gun that I had as a kid. I remember all the good times I used to have with this thing, like you can pull this out and everything, like it's, it's so, so cool. Only thing is like, I think it's supposed to light up. I pull the trigger. And, and nothing really happens. But I think it's, it lights up like a sound gets made. I don't, I don't really, uh, oh, oh, the battery is just a little loose. Let me, let me push that in. That should be a lot better. All right, let's try it out now. Let's see. Yo, what's up, friends? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for checking in today. And yes, I'm excited for today's video because one of my favorite creators on YouTube is Peter McKinnon. And what I love about Peter, outside of his personality and his vlogs, are his tutorials. Because he really shows creators and professionals how to make their content better. He takes his vast knowledge of video and photo editing and takes these concepts that are kind of long and shortens them down into a way that's fun to learn and easy to understand. The only thing is, Peter works pretty much only in the Adobe suite. So any video editing is gonna be done in Premiere Pro or After Effects. But for me, and I feel as a lot of other creators on YouTube, use Final Cut because we have Max. It kind of just made sense. We started in iMovie, we evolved the Final Cut. We wanted to use something that was optimized for Mac software. And so what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna kind of break down some of the things Peter does in Premiere and After Effects and use most Motion and Final Cut Pro. Because personally for me, I see a lot of his stuff and I want to do that too, but it's kind of hard to find tutorials on it. So I want to hopefully help out with that. And so for today's video, we're going to talk about what Peter just talked about yesterday, corner pinning. I'll show all you how easy it is to do that in Final Cut. It's so easy in Final Cut. It would be like a two minute video. We all know tutorials can't just be two minutes. So I'm also gonna talk about how Peter made the lightsaber effect in his video, and I'm gonna use the little skit that I did in the beginning with my Power Rangers laser. Cool, so with that, we'll do a quick set change, and I'll see all you friends at my computer. Thanks for following me back. So here we are, we're in Final Cut, and I've already added in my two clips. Is what Peter does is he'll take a picture of something, and he'll put that in, and then on top of it, he'll put the clip that he wants to superimpose onto that picture to make it look like he's watching something he's actually doing. And this is gonna be really meta, because for this, the clip that I'm gonna be using is literally this clip, and we're gonna impose that on top of my iPhone. So the first thing, bottom layer, is gonna be our phone. And then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the beginning, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place our video clip on top, and then on the bottom left here of our playback window, you have probably, it looks like this little uh, square box with little four dots in the corners. Right next to this should be a down arrow. If you press on that, there's an option for distort. And when you get distort, your clip is going to have these eight little squares with little dashes in between each square. And if you drag one, it's going to just move that around. Move your clip just that one point, and distorting it, kind of making it look kind of 3D-ish. This is so easy. Now what we've got to do, we're just going to drag our corners into our iPhone here. Let's do that. That looks good but we want to make sure that it's really perfect and not just kind of slanted. So let's zoom in. I'm going to go into 100% here, get really close to my phone. And iPhones have a little bit of a black border around the image. They don't completely cover the screen. So to make that look really good, I'm going to move this just a little bit to just a small amount of black on my edges, really paying attention to my detail. Just like that. Return. Oh, let's play it back. Let's see. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's awesome. And that's awesome. But we now we have superimposed our clip onto a photo so it looks like playing something back before it's even done. So Peter's tutorial has that called corner pinning. I've never heard of that term before. And here it's just the distort option. I think it's actually even easier in Final Cut Pro than it is in Premiere. But let's move on to the next part. In my opinion, what's a lot more fun, we're gonna go into motion and we're gonna learn how to make that laser effect. So open up motion, you're gonna see project browser. On the top right where it says preset, we're gonna select this to 4K, cause that's what I'm shooting this video in. But if you have a video in 1080, 720, you can pick from there. And then for frame rate, I'm gonna switch it down to 24 frames per second and then I'll do open on the bottom right. Cool, so we have all of our windows open here. First thing I wanna do, you can do either go up to file and you can do import or on your keyboard, you can just do command I. And we're gonna pick our movie clip. I have laser beam clip here. So my clip is in there. Now we need to add my laser effect. Fortunately, Motion has something that we can just use for stock. So if you go to the left in your library, you might have to press the library tab up here and make sure that library here is selected. And let's go into shapes and on the bottom left, we're gonna scroll down till we see neon rectangle. I'm just gonna drag that in to the start here. 
So now we get this kind of lightsaber's kind of shape, but I don't really want it to be blue. I want it to be red, or maybe you want it to be a different color. So what we'll do is with the neon rectangle selected, I'm gonna go back to the top left where it says inspector, and then now I have this bar with these different colors on it. And these represent the colors of the lightsaber. You can see that the middle one is the white, and then we have the left side and the right side have that blue, but I want it to be red. So I'm gonna click on the first blue one on the right. I'm gonna change the color. It's gonna go to red. So that changed half of it. Now let's change the left side to red as well. And that's good. Awesome, so we've changed the color. We're gonna go back to our timeline on the bottom right. What I wanna do is I wanna position my shape, my laser shape here in front of my blaster. So I'm gonna move this over, just click and drag like how you would in Final Cut. And you also can move the circle, again, just like how you would in Final Cut. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna shrink it in just a bit, make it kind of small. Easy enough, that's just how you can reposition something. You just drag it where you want it to be. But now what we need to do is we need to place it. So we have to add keyframes. In kind of the middle here on my screen, you have this red circle with a diamond in it looking like the keyframe. That is recording. So that's gonna record each frame. So whatever we position in that frame is gonna stick. So I'm gonna press it, the circle gets filled in red. So now I'm now recording. So first frame, I like the laser like that. I'm gonna do the right key to move to the next frame. And now I'm gonna just pull that laser out a little bit. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer so that's coming forward. And then I'm gonna go to the next one and then to the next one and then one more. And that's it. I think four is probably pretty good for something like this. Uh, you want it to be, look like it's moving really fast. So the less frames it's on the screen, that's better. So let's go ahead and let's do that for every time that I'm shooting my blaster. Okay, easy enough. So now if we play it back, It looks like how we want to. It looks like I'm shooting a laser out of my Power Rangers blaster. And that's it. It's that easy to make a lightsaber effect or just a, a laser effect. <laughs> awesome, friends. Thanks for checking in today. I hope that was an easy, comprehensive tutorial on how to do corner pinning and how to use motion to make this laser lightsaber effect. If this helps you, definitely let me know. I love to hear it. And maybe there's some other tutorials that Peter has or other YouTubers have done in Premiere that you want me to show you how to do in Final Cut. Definitely let me know. If you want to do more of these because some of this stuff is so easy to do, but behind the interfaces of motion in Final Cut, it can be really daunting. I definitely want to kind of break that down. So friends, thank you so much for checking in today. Keep creating, be brave, and above all else, hashtag stay happy. I'll see all your friends in the next video. Peace. So Peter, so, so Peter, 